In this topic, I'll be discussing indicators, which are used to test whether solutions are acidic, basic, or neutral. Now, indicators can either be naturally occurring, such as from plants and flowers, or they can also be man-made, which we call synthetic indicators. So, looking at some naturally occurring indicators, hydrangeas are flowers that are common throughout Australia, and they come in various forms pink, blue, and also in between, which is sort of purple. There's a good reason for this, because hydrangeas are actually a naturally occurring indicator. Now, when they're in naturally acidic soils, they produce blue flowers. But if the soil is basic, they produce pink flowers. And this has to do with their uptake of aluminium. So if they do take up aluminium in acidic soils, then they become blue. If they can't take up aluminium, which means that the aluminium is insoluble, which means it's not dissolving in water, then they produce pink flowers. Now gardeners can actually change the colour of the hydrangeas, or whoever owns the flowers, by either adding an acid or a base to the soil, depending on whether they want pink or blue. Quite exciting. So indicators. From simple observations, chemists have been able to identify natural acid-base indicators, such as the hydrangeas. And many of these acid-base indicators are used in, the, used in the laboratory, are made from pigments extracted from the leaves and flowers of various plants. And the indicators are chemical substances that change colour depending on whether they are in acidic or basic solutions. So that's the definition of an indicator. There are often complex organic substances, molecules, that exist in at least two different coloured forms. And this is very important. If they didn't change colour, they couldn't be an indicator, because you wouldn't tell. So they have to exist in at least two different coloured forms. Looking at litmus, this is probably the best known acid base indicator and it comes in pink and blue. So the natural blue-purple dye is extracted from various species of lichen, which is a microorganism that actually grows on wood, rotting wood, in places such as rainforests and that sort of thing. And what happens is water solutions of this dye can be absorbed onto strips of paper to produce the blue litmus paper, as you can see in the picture. And the dye solution can be slightly acidified, which means we add an acid to it, to produce red solutions that can be absorbed onto paper, once again, onto a strip, and produce red litmus paper. So the red litmus will tell us it's acidic, the blue litmus will tell us it's basic. So looking at colours of litmus, here you can see we have litmus paper between the pH of 1 to 10, now, just remember that the pH scale actually goes from 1 to 14. Anything, if a pH is less than 7, which is the pH of water, which is neutral, then it's acidic. If the pH is greater than 7, then you have a basic solution. Okay, so looking at the colours of litmus, in water, litmus will be blue-purple. In strongly acidic solutions, litmus will be red. And in strongly basic solutions, litmus will be blue. Now looking at a few other naturally occurring indicators, anthocyanin is also a good example. And this experiment can almost be done at home, to be honest. It just means we need some red cabbage. So what we do, we take red cabbage, and we boil them up. You can also take the flowers of poppies and cornflowers. So anthocyanin solution can be obtained by boiling the red cabbage leaves and pouring off the red or purple liquid. And you have a natural indicator. So again, looking at anthocyanin, it goes through a number of colour changes from red, as you can see over here, in acidic solutions, to green, in mildly basic solutions, 
Okay, acidic, remember, less than seven. Basic, more than seven. And very, very basic solutions, it'll go yellow. Cochineal is quite an unusual indicator. It's not used very widely anymore. Um, but you actually grind the dried bodies of a female insect of the species Dactylopius coccus, found in Mexico and the Caribbean. And what you can see from that picture, it's a very rustic mortar and pestle, if you will. And they grind the bodies, and as you can see, they come out red. And this will act as a natural indicator. Uh, it's actually yellow in acidic solutions, and scarlet, or red, which you can see in the picture there, in basic solutions. So it's rarely used today, because it is a bit <laughs> strange, <laughs> but it's still widely used in many other applications, such as a food additive. It's actually a food colouring, and you wouldn't know it, but yes, it's still used for that reason. Also in cosmetics, and it's also as a fabric dye, because as you can see, it has a very, very strong colour. Now moving on to synthetic indicators, which are man-made. They can be manufactured by industrial chemists. And some common examples, which I'll be discussing, are methyl orange, bromothymol blue, phenolphthalein, and universal indicator. So let's look at the colours of some common indicators. Starting with methyl orange, here we have some beakers with their colours. So, in strongly acidic solutions, methyl orange will be red. In water, which is neutral, it will be orange-yellow. And in strongly basic solutions, it will be yellow, as you can see from the picture above. Bromothymol blue, another commonly used indicator. In strongly acidic solutions, it will be yellow. In water, green. In basic solutions, blue. Phenolphthalein, quite difficult to pronounce, very difficult to spell also. Phenolphthalein, pretty simple. In acidic or neutral, it will be colourless. But in basic solutions, it will turn pink. So phenolphthalein is actually a common, commonly used indicator for titrations, going from acid to base. Universal indicator, as the name suggests, universal. It covers the whole spectrum of the pH and it has different colours for every pH. So strong acids, you start with your reds. Weak acids, we go into orange. Neutral, we go into yellow-green. Weak bases, we start to go into green-blue. And strong bases, we go into blue-purple. So universal indicator is probably the best indicator because it covers all bases, basically. The whole pH spectrum, 1 to 14. So let's look at these common indicators that I've described and let's look at their colour changes. So what you do need to remember is where the colour change will happen. Phenolphthalein changes at about 8.2. Bromothymol blue, yellow to blue. Methyl orange, red to yellow. Litmus, red, nothing in between, blue. So just remember where these indicators change colour because you may get a question asking which indicator should I use for testing pH something to something and so you should remember these common indicators that most chemists use. An indicator is placed in a strongly basic solution. The indicator changes from red-orange to yellow. Which of the following indicators could have been used? Now these are our synthetic indicators, litmus, phenolphthalein, bromothymol blue or methyl orange. Now litmus would go from blue purple to blue, phenolphthalein would go from colourless to pink and bromothymol blue would go from green to blue. So our answer there is going to be methyl orange. Question 7. What colour is produced when four drops of phenolphthalein are added to 100 ml of hydrochloric acid. Now phenolphthalein is colourless in neutral and acidic solutions and it's pink in basic solutions. 
So our answer is going to be colourless. Question A. Can red litmus or blue litmus be used alone to test the acidity of a substance? And just remember the word alone. Now, no, because if red litmus was used to test an acidic substance, there would be no colour change, so you couldn't tell either way. So when neither red nor blue indicator changes colour, you have a neutral solution, such as water or sodium chloride solution, ethanol, those sort of things. Finally, question nine, what advantage does universal indicator provide over other indicators? Universal indicator provides more accurate information about the pH than other indicators. Because if you remember, it will show the whole spectrum of colors for the whole pH range. So because it, has, it contains a range of dyes that undergo a number of color changes at different pHs. So that wraps up my discussion about indicators. Mm -hmm.